Remember when in primary school I had to play the Easter Bunny? Um, as it, yeah. And I was like really offended by that because I had big old teeth, as you probably remember. And the teeth, like, oh, it's just because your bunny hops are really good. Looking back, I'm like, yes, mate. <laughs> you were just like, yeah. kid's got big teeth, he's been the bunny. This is hilarious. Welcome to the Bible in One Year podcast brought to you by Two Brits and a Bible. If you like the idea of a casual but meaningful chat about the Bible, a couple of mates, listen in, there might be something in here for you. Today is day 113, covering 2 Kings 6, 7, and 8. If you want a brief overview of these chapters, they're in the description. All right, crack it, mate. Let's crack on, shall we? <laughs> Don't often go proper, London. <laughs> it's even, the, I mean, for the people watching, it's the teeth and everything. Like, yeah. That's excellent. That's yeah. Got to have your teeth. <laughs> Because that's something that you, I don't tell you enough. You sort of embody the accent sometimes as well. It's not just the voice, it's the physicality as well. People just so. assume English bad teeth. That's what we meant by that. But thanks to yeah. the glories of orthodontics, these bad boys are nice and straight. Correct. So Correct. When in primary school, I had to play the Easter Bunny. Um, as it, yeah. And I was like really offended by that because I had big old teeth, as you probably remember. And the teeth, like, oh, it's just because your bunny hops are really good. Looking back, I'm like, yes, mate. <laughs> you were just like, yeah. kid's got big teeth. He's being the bunny. This is hilarious. Correct. Oh, yeah. Gosh. That's brilliant. So anyway, um, Two Kings 6 uh, kicks off with like, it's one of those things which it, when you just read it through, it sounds like a, a cool miracle, but a mini miracle where mm. one of the workers drops an axe head in the water and Elisha's like, where was it? And he puts down a stick and the axe head floats, kind of just breezes over it. But it's the mm. line that got me was in uh, 6 verse 5. Oh, no, my Lord, he cried out. It was borrowed. And we've read previously about anything that you borrow, you have to return in the condition you found it or better, or else you have to right. give, isn't it like 5% more of the value. Yeah. And so actually yeah. the fact that he's borrowing an ax head, ax heads were probably quite like expensive items in those days. He probably couldn't afford to repay it plus the 5% out of his own pocket. So this miracle right. is actually a huge miracle, like a very yeah. valuable one for the person there. And so it's one of these tiny little things where you're like, Oh, that's cool. I like that. I love that man yeah absolutely that in depending on the recipient like you say there is no small miracle right yeah. like i love that i absolutely love that yeah um i actually think if you do next one as well because mine's after that all right um then we get into this part where uh the king of aram's just hacked off with elisha constantly calling him out and stuff so he sends this army to catch him and they surround where elisha's at and his servant is like oh no what should we do and we're now in 2 kings 6 16 elisha says don't be afraid those who are with us are more numerous than those who are with they and elisha prayed open his eyes servant opened his eyes and the hills were full of horses and chariots of fire all around elisha so it's just like what we can see in the natural we kind of forget there is a supernatural realm as well where there is so much going on and the armies that are with us are so much more powerful than the armies against us and yeah. so just just don't be afraid also it's kind of a prayer to open our hearts to 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 know that they're there as well as seeing them i don't think it's very common for people to see into the spiritual but just just knowing it can make a huge yep. difference in our lives yeah i'm reminded of when jesus is being taken away by the romans and and i think it's to peter he just says like don't you know that i could have like a hundred yeah. angels like right now just eviscerate everything like yeah just as you say knowing that and and i think that's really pertinent for what we're living through in these times as well like we've yeah. gone through this rough pandemic there's these other things going on and it seems like things are getting worse and in an earthly sense, perhaps they are, but in a spiritual sense, they never are. Yeah. So that's really cool. Uh, God always has everything under full control yeah. and it's sovereign overall. Um, so then, yeah, he prays to open up the eyes there and then he strikes the army with blindness as well. And I just said, uh, this is six, eight, uh, second King 618. And I just, I love that juxtaposition, but also imagine just having this level of authority and trust from God, because as you then go on to say in 621, Elisha doesn't mistreat these enemies, even though he has full power over them yeah. here, right? God knows that Elisha will be a faithful servant and give them food and water, as you say. And, I, you know, feel free to develop on your own point if you want. Yeah. But I just love that, the authority he was given. Absolutely. It's a bit of banter as well. He's like, oh, you're looking for this Elisha fellow? Follow me. I'll lead you to him. 
and they're like, oh, thanks, random stranger. Um, but then it's just killing them with kindness, basically, isn't it? Because there were raiders that used to come in year on year on year. And because of the kindness that he showed them, they didn't come in anymore. So it was actually beneficial overall instead of killing them. Yeah, absolutely, man. And again, that just points to Jesus, doesn't it? The way that he came is to serve. It's amazing. Um, so skipping down a little bit, but still in Second Kings for now, um, then he asked her, what's the matter? And she answered, this woman said to me, give up your son so we may eat him today and tomorrow we'll eat my son. That next level famine that I just wanted to mention quickly, like, you know, it kind of links to what I was saying earlier, like even in the earthly realm, when things seem really terrible, just know that God's got your back. But that's some really bad levels of famine. Yeah, it's in tough, isn't it, man? And like there are so many things yeah. in the Bible where you see the good come out the back of it. Nothing is mentioned yeah. out the back of this story for what happened to that woman who sacrificed her son, basically. Right, right. Just trust that God must have turned it for good some way because that's who he is. Yeah, exactly right. Cool. Um, so jumping into Second Kings now, I've just got a sort of an overview of it generally. I just I think if you want to tuck in with a few points, you've got lots to lots of good stuff. But I, I, I guess it, overall, I was just saying that God's um, ability to work through things never fails to amaze me. So the fact that everyone's sort of given up, everyone thinks that the Arameans are going to overrun everything. And yet then he sends out the, dece- the, the angels to deceive the Arameans. They all leave and the famine is lifted and everything, you know just freaking awesome yeah and the bit that i picked out out of that as well is um it's at dusk so these four lepers went out and were like well we're dead here we're dead there might as well try our hand with the enemy um at dusk they got up and went out when they reached the edge of the camp no one was there for the lord had caused the arameans to hear the sound of chariots and horses and a great right. army sounds a bit like the same army that was surrounding the hills elisha was by you know like yeah he's there man we just have to know that it's there and see it um that's cool yeah absolutely um and then just this fact that these four lepers are like sweet we are minted now they could just keep on like looting the place but like actually no if we wait until morning punishment will overtake us and i like that little saying um like we need to stop acting selfishly and go make sure the good news is proclaimed absolutely dude absolutely um one other thing out the back of this this is now into second kings eight just about um i think you've got a similar point actually so the fact that the woman that we spoke about yesterday, who's the wid- the widow, right? I think it's the widow, the, the woman who ends up with the son. Yeah, not sure she's a widow, but... She wasn't a widow, you're right. I'm mixing up stories, my bad. But anyway, the fact that now they drop this thing of, oh yeah, Elisha also told her just to go away for a while, so she avoids all the famine and stuff, right? Yeah. As yeah. It's just like, you know, we aren't prosperity gospel people here at all, but just sometimes when you do good things you get rewarded in good ways like that yeah. so the fact that she avoided all this crap because she was nice to elisha is awesome yeah absolutely and the fact that it was years it was after seven years she came back from that's what i just i had to say seven as well sorry um after seven years obviously um she came back but then the king gave her back everything including the income from the land from the day she left until now so basically if her field would have had harvest she got the income from that and it's just you can trust god through the challenges it may still be bad in the day-to-day you're in but it can be restored to you and it can be restored with interest basically so much more than you ever expected she probably didn't expect to get her land back let alone get her land back plus the income that would have been missed out from it so it's just it's so fantastic the way god can work through that i think there was a jeff price uh sermon in there about that somewhere nice it reminds me of job to some extent as well like you know he i don't think that you know, the Bible project talks about how it's not necessarily a reward to Job that he got double back after all the suffering, but it's just that same point, right? That yeah. out of suffering can come big things. Yeah. Last quick thing um, I thought was unsettling is Elisha just stares at uh, Hazel with a fixed gaze mm-hmm. and begins to weep because he knows what Hazel is about to do. Just imagine the intensity of seeing these prophetic yeah. visions and just imagine how unsettling it would be to be Hazel in that moment yeah, too. True. True. I didn't get, I think it's above our pay grade. He tells Hazael to go back and say his Lord will recover, even though he won't. So that seems a bit odd. I didn't mention that in the uh, apologetics Bible. Um, yeah. Also worth noting, the apologetics Bible did tell me that this whole section is actually slightly, about, slightly out of chronological order. So a bit odd, it's hmm. just the way that Elisha's written it down. Kind of like how we tell stories too, really. Like, oh yeah, this happened and that happened all over the joint. Anyway, sorry, I've waffled on a bit. 
Thanks very much for listening. Tomorrow's Bible reading is going to be 2 Kings 9, 10 and 11. So why don't you be, be or pick up your Bible, get reading. In the meantime, please consider joining us on social media at 2 Brits and Bible, sharing this with someone to help spread the word of God. 